This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's 42522, show number 384. Markets are still under pressure, Nick. Is this the uh, is this what we've been waiting for or is it the Fed's last opportunity for one more pump? Well, it could be what we're waiting for, but you know, last week on Thursday, um, the markets really staged a very, very sharp downturn, and it really came after Fed Chairman Powell was doing a presentation, I believe, at the IMF or one of the IMF uh, meetings, and uh, he reiterated his hawkish stance. So basically, he said that the Fed was going to raise by 50 basis points in early May, I believe May 2nd or May 3rd, they're going to conclude their May meeting. He also said that they're going to front load rate hikes to fight inflation. And the market just got, you know, very, very skittish. And we saw a big sell off begin really Thursday. In fact, Thursday morning, we gapped higher and the markets gave up a big gain by the close. I knew right then and there, I said, wow, this is going to be pretty ugly the next uh, couple of days. And sure enough, on Friday, we had a bloodbath decline uh, of epic proportions. Dow was almost down a thousand points. And um, today, I, I think the markets are trying to find some footing here. So um, we haven't broken you know, a couple of key levels for me. I told my members about that, and uh, we're still holding. So the market actually, believe it or not, lives to fight another day. Plus, it was a 90% down day on Friday. Generally, after a 90% down day, the markets will rebound a little bit. And today, believe it or not, the NASDAQ is green. It's positive. So it's up over half a half a percent as we speak. So not a bad trading day um, for technology as yields pull back. But you are seeing a lot of uh, other areas under distribution. Right. So and next, uh, the lockdowns in China, we see they've happened again. I'm not quite sure what the point of it all is. We've already proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that lockdowns are doomed to failure. They don't do anything. But I guess when you have a totalitarian government, you do whatever you want. I guess so. And it's really hurting the commodity sectors today. Oil, base metals, even the precious metals are all under big pressure. And that began last week as well. Um, but we are seeing that um, as the news catalyst to drive uh, commodities lower. So all these group, all of these groups were already overbought on a larger time frame. So pullbacks, or even a correction here is not unusual because these have been the big winners. So as money shifts and moves around, remember, this is just a game of hot potato. Money goes out of one area, goes into another area, and just got to be able to read those uh, switching of the trends. But the big question is whether or not this is signaling a real global slowdown. And that's really the bigger problem for markets going forward. But right now, we are definitely seeing a lot of weakness in the energy stocks, uh, the base metals stocks, uh, the precious metals are under pressure, gold miners are under pressure. So you name it, um, if it was a commodity that was soaring and roaring, it is definitely in pullback mode. All right. So one theory that I wrote, I read, and I don't want to get into conspiracy theories, but it makes a lot of sense. The lockdowns, while not being needed for public health reasons, what they do is they drive down commodities. And let's face it, uh, China's economy is dependent on imported commodities from all over the world. So this could be the ultimate uh, smackdown of commodities. <laughs> It could be. I, I don't rule anything out. I don't even rule conspiracy theories out anymore because so many of them have come to fruition. So honestly, um, when you look at uh, the things that go on out there and you or you or you even look at what goes on in our own country, we have oil, all the energy in the world here and we don't produce it. It's just baffling. It's almost as if this is what the powers that be want. Yes. It's and, not almost, it is, let's face yeah, it. Yeah, so let's let's say what it is, right? Let's just call a spade a spade and, and stop, you know, hiding behind some kind of, uh, you know, mask. You can't say this, you can't say that. This is what's going on. It, I mean, I could solve this problem, the world economy, in 20 minutes. But, you know, that's, that's the problem right now is that um, we don't have people out there that want to solve these problems. These are not difficult problems. This market the economy wants to rev up, but, you know, it's just sign of the times. That's all it is.
<laughs> yeah, you could do it if they would let you, but you know, you have no possibility of ever getting elected here. Let's face it, Nick, even though I think you're more qualified than the people who are running <laughs> things now, right? Yeah, I, I would never want to run for office of, of any sorts. It's just not in my, you know, in my blood. But, um, you know, I, I just look at some of these problems. These guys have a lot of very smart people behind them, MBAs, PhDs, statisticians, mathematicians, and they just can't figure it out. It's a little bit baffling. It's almost like the central bank who is printing four trillion dollars, um, you know, telling you that inflation is transitory. We called about we talked about inflation in March 2020, that it was about to explode and, you know, made a lot of money off of it, too. I mean, caught a lot of moves in copper and gold and gold miners. I mean, you know, but these these guys never saw it, saw, saw it coming. So, uh, again, you know, this is why I use charts, Kerry. I just don't even care or listen to anything that these talking heads have to say. No, I couldn't agree with you more. And look, uh, there's nothing new under the sun here. It's all been done before. It's just uh, shocking that anybody uh, believes anything that they have to say. Yeah, and, and the same goes for the media. Why would you even listen to them or believe anything they have to say? If they say something, believe it or not, I'm, I'm looking the opposite direction. I don't even, I don't trust them, believe them, or nor do I even care any longer. And I think people have that same feeling uh, going on around the world. I agree. Hey, so what about uh, Twitter? Twitter is backing down. Musk, uh, Musk looks like he's getting the company. Well, it, it could be. Twitter's actually up today 3%. So the stock is um, acting like something could be going on there. Um, as I said on this program just last week, I said Twitter, believe it or not, has an upside to $58, although the pattern to get there is not so pretty. Um, so I'm waiting on pattern. But I do believe the ultimate upside off of the recent move is to around 58. So we'll see if Musk uh, pulls it off. I, I wouldn't put anything past the guy. Obviously, nobody should. Um, so it, it is it is certainly possible that he uh, he becomes <laughs> I mean, he runs how many companies already? What what's what's just what's Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. And uh... And uh, hey, uh, he's been having a little bit of a pissing match with uh, Bill Gates <laughs> in the past couple of days. I, People I've watching seen that. that. It's hysterical. Yes. Yeah, it's been going on for a while, too. Um, you know, I, I don't know what to make of it, you know, when these billionaires have a, a bickering match. But, you know, Bill Gates could be possibly the most hated person on the, on the earth right now. So, you know, uh, people love to see Elon uh, get up in his face there and, you know, say this and that. It, it, it's pretty entertaining. Yeah, it's definitely entertaining. And <laughs> yeah, just uh, hey, anything to uh, keep the masses occupied and uh, and uh, doing uh, doing the bidding of their masters. Right. Yes, that is 100 percent what it is. And, um, you know, uh, the sooner everybody knows about it, uh, you know, then things will shift. But until then, you know, it'll continue. Yeah, it's just a big game here. Never forget that. It's all a game. Well, uh, gold and silver are down, uh, down substantially. And the question is, are they going to stay down for a while, go down further, or are they going to rebound? Well, when you, when you look at gold futures, which, which by the way, are getting hit by 2% today, they're down pretty significantly. You got some support levels coming up here. You got a big double bottom level coming up from uh, late March, March 29th. I believe gold futures traded down to 1888. Today, we're at, you know, roughly around that area or just a little bit above it. So, you know, we're testing that level. But if that level gives way, then you're going to see a correction all the way down and it'll probably pierce 1800. So, you know, again, I, I received so much heat because I said, you know, gold's going to make one more dip um, and probably a pretty significant one at that in due time here, you know, but uh, nothing goes up in a straight line in this business. And that's what people have to remember. There's always backing and filling. And that, that's what gold is doing now. Yeah. Well, interesting. Interesting. So, so how do you play this market here? <laughs> you what do play you do? It very you play it very, very carefully. You have to, what you have to do is you have to really watch the charts. And if you don't watch the charts closely and you're not really versed in how to read charts, you really don't stand a chance in this environment. Just look at the talking heads on TV. They're getting their head slammed, slammed right now. They are just, 
don't know what to do. Um, but you have to just read charts right now. That's the only way you could survive in this business. And it's not about even making tons of money right now. It's about cash preservation because this is a very, very tough environment. Who would think today technology would get a bid and energy would get crushed? Not many people, right? So on Friday, I had bought puts on uh uh, KMI ticker symbol Kinder Morgan, and you know today made 28 percent uh, this morning. Um, that's what you got to do. You got to be very, very quick. You got to be very, very savvy in a lot of these trades right now, and it's not an easy game. No, it's not. If it was so easy, anybody would do it, right? That's right. And you know, I remember back in the 90s, I was in an office. We I think we had 700 people in there. To this day, I only keep keep tabs with four people to keep in touch with and everybody else is gone. They became mortgage brokers or something else. Uh, so much for the stock jockeys. They've gone by the wayside. They've gone. They've all fallen by the wayside, huh? <laughs> well, that's a little sad, isn't it? But I guess they weren't cut out to do it. Well, it just becomes a lot harder when you have a, a bear market. You know, anybody can trade the bull market. And that's what we were saying on this show a while ago. I said, people don't realize, but, you know, you have these Robin Hood traders out there. These guys have never experienced this. So how are they going to survive a, a bear? They, and this isn't even a bear yet. This is just a bear phase. You know, we're not even in a bear yet. So you could just see what has happened to a stock like Robin Hood. Um, and I don't mean to pick on them, you know, but, you know, this is a company that debuted and, and went as high as, I believe, $85. Now it trades at $10. That's just typical of who's holding shares and, you know, who's a part of that business. And it, it just shows you, you know, weekends. And, and that's, that's what you always got to take note of. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I, of course, uh, no show would be complete without a review of cryptos and Bitcoin. It's back under 40. Yeah, cryptos have pulled back pretty nicely today. They're down, you know, another one and a half percent below 40, sitting there around 39. But they haven't broken yet. Um, but I will say this much about them at the moment. The chart is very, very difficult. So they're up, down, and all around. But they really need to break below 38,000 on Bitcoin futures chart on a weekly close. If that happens, I would start to be very, very cautious at the moment, they're still chopping around. They're still living the fight another day. But if they break 38,000 or 37,500 on a weekly close, whew, watch out. Could get ugly out there. Look out below. Well, I guess but right that's... <laughs> now they're okay. They're still living the fight another day. All right. Well, that's it for today. Make sure you go over to Nick's site in the money stocks.com. See how he's beaten and keeps on beating the averages for decades. The Twitter feeds at ITMS. At Nick Santiago01 and at Kerry Lutz. Your emails are welcome. KL at KerryLutz.com. Nick, we will talk to you on Wednesday. Sounds good, Kerry.